Hey, hey, I never had sex before. I got a bad little bitch in the vents for sure. I know that I ain't never taken off those shorts. So if you think we gonna smash it, maybe close that door. Hey, I ain't never had sex before. I got a bad little bitch in the vents for sure. I know that I ain't never taken off those shorts. So if you think we gonna smash it, maybe close that door. It's been getting pretty hard to keep my dick in my pants. Told profits and the money, man, I need that advance. I do. I'm trying to fuck this cutie, but I got it. Happy New Year, everyone. I'm gonna be honest, I thought the planet would blow up and kill us all by now, but we're still kicking. And now that we've all made it through to another year, why not continue this rerun idea I had with the Resident Evil 2 remake? I have speed ran the absolute shit out of this game, and when I say that, I mean I made this game my bitch. I've never raw dogged a game so damn hard before, but like, mm! I want you to know that this game is literal crack, which is why the people that wrote negative reviews about this game are so damn high. This game is trash, worse than the poop on my butt. Not that easy, but Grammarly can help. Talking about reviews, this game is the 33rd most positively rated game on Steam according to SteamDB. Why is this game so good? Well, unlike the last video, I will separate this video into six categories. Visuals, sound design, enemy variety, story, and gameplay. And, and passion. So obviously, because it's first on the list, let's start with visuals. I mean, the fuck do you want me to say? You want, you want me to say it looks like shit? <laughs> no. So this game runs on the Resident Evil engine, which is a short way of saying that the whole game runs off of a cheat code. When Resident Evil 7 was being developed, they had invented a beautiful piece of technology called the RE engine, where they could just bring something into the studio, scan it, and voila in the game. This whole entire burger was scanned into the game, and I mean, look at it! Sure, the color palette doesn't do any justice to that thing, but I wanna fuck that burger. I mean, shit, look at the way that the bun moves off the patty as this fat ass destroys it with his soon-to-be zombie teeth. By the way, I should mention that this guy is in the new Resident Evil movie that came out, and he got fucking destroyed. Oh, and the burger was there too! Holy shit! I might make, like, a bonus review in this movie, but, like, yeah. This game looks so good, because they just scanned shit and threw it in there, and, and when they couldn't scan it, they expertly 3D modeled it to make it look just... Mm, oh, what the f Don't even get me started on how damn good this game is optimized. I'm sorry, but I have 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 2060 Super, and that shit can't even run COD at 90 FPS on high settings, even with RTX turned off. The fact I can have this game cranked to the max and still get a consistent 160 to 180 FPS is like I just slap some virgin oil onto a stick of butter and slung it down a slippery slide. This shit is more oiled up than Lilani Wong. Anyway, that's that. The game looks good, runs good, and my internet history is tainted forever. Now, in my opinion, other than the fact that Mr. X has some hefty footsteps, the sound design in this game is okay. I personally believe that RE7 was the pinnacle of Resident Evil sound design, and this game is like nothing crazy. Guns sound like guns, zombies sound like zombies, and oh fuck. There are certain aspects of the game where the sound kind of excels, and that is the sewer. If there was ever a chance for me to say that I hate walking around in shit water surrounded by booger walls and disgusting meat monsters moaning at me, it's now. Other than the sewer and that one song that plays when Mr. X walks into the boss fight, I'll say the sound design is just kind of expected. Nothing blows me away, but that doesn't break the game. This one is pretty straightforward. Zombies stumble their way to you until you blow off their head. Lickers will stumble until they hear you, in which case they will eat your fucking face off like a steroid-induced chimpanzee that wants to do nothing but fuck his uncle and lift weights. Cerberuses, I don't know why they couldn't just call them dogs, but yeah, they do dog things. Ivies, which are pretty easy to get around, but will one-shot you if you don't have a sub-weapon to escape their grasp. And William Birkin and the Alligator, although they aren't really recurring enemies as much as they are scripted boss fights. There's not anywhere near as much as the first game had, or even the original Resident Evil 2 that this game is based off of, but it's still a decent chunk, and every enemy is different enough, which changes up the game's pace every time you've got to fight one of them. Um, I mean, 
Sure. Look, Resident Evil's story was pretty stale until Code Veronica, so I'll keep this short. Leon is on his first day to work when he gets to a gas station, and he finds that the nearby civilians have become cannibalistic and want to eat his face. He meets Claire, and they get separated when they drive into the city. Anyway, Leon goes to the police station and finds Marvin Branner, who, who dies, and also everyone is a zombo, and then he meets Ada Wong, who is an FBI agent who is looking for a sample of the G-Virus to incriminate Umbrella, and oh, whoops, looks like she's working for Albert Wesker as a mercenary. And while Leon has part of the story shared with Ada, Claire has parts of the story shared with Sherry Birkin, who is blonde and always has been. Sherry Birkin's running from her dad because the virus that inhabits his body wants to impregnate her, so, you know, incest infects, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Pretty basic again, but like, I could give no shits because this game's big strength is not story. So I'll start by talking about resource management. This game gives you a pretty fair amount of bullets, but mixed with enemies that won't die and fuck all inventory space, you're going to have to strategize. Constantly on your toes when you think about what gun or ammo to use on an enemy, unless you're like me and just... Now the boss fights are pretty typical where you just shoot the eyeballs and then hit them while they're down except for Mr. X where you stun him three times or wait a minute and a half. Oh wait, what's that? A knife glitch? The knife's damage is based on the frame rate. The more frames, the more damage. Obviously on console where the frame rate is capped, this doesn't mean much, but on PC... Jesus Christ. This game also has amazing puzzles, which are kind of the main thing in this game, to be honest, because people don't realize it, but the reason this game's replay value is so high is because there is puzzles. Obviously, the first time you might spend two to three hours in the police station, but if you played as much as I have and remember all those puzzles, you can get down to seven minutes. Puzzles aren't too hard, but they aren't straight up easy, so you'll have to think a bit. The backtracking also helps you appreciate the environment a lot more, and maybe you missed something earlier and you just scored some extra bullets. I have no problem with the gameplay in this game, and god damn will I play it until I die. I don't think I've ever seen passion like this in such a long-running franchise before. On August 13th, 2015, Yoshiaki Hirabayashi <laughs> announced that due to the high fan demand for a remake of the second game, he was able to get the project greenlit and that they would start work on it immediately. Now, originally they were going to stick with the fixed camera angles, but for this game, they instead decided to opt for a more third-person camera angle as it would not only make you experience the horror in a more personal fashion, but they still wanted to keep the fans of the more modern Resident Evil games. Seeing how excited these people were when working on this game really makes me appreciate the fact that even the worst Resident Evil games still have more passion behind them than any other modern day franchise. So while this game excludes some things from the original and isn't exceptional in every department, I can safely say that altogether this game is almost perfection. And honestly, up there as the best that this franchise has to offer. So I'm going to give Resident Evil 2 an S on the tier list. And it goes on sale quite a lot, so I'd say pick up this game, because when you can get it on sale for like 15 American doubloons, this game is awesome, and I'd recommend this game to everybody. Next video I'll be working on is the Resident Evil 3 remake, which was released only a year later.